someone who fights against his bad personality, bad traits, and he sees that he constantly fail. What's the solution not to break? Eventually you break. How many times you can fail? You try to become a driver. You fail the first road test, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. At one point you say, Hashem doesn't want me to be a driver. Let me, leave me alone. That's it, I give up. Or I know couples, they cannot have kids. So they went to Israel, there's a special place called Pua. Shifra and Pua. Shifra and Pua were the uh, midwives that delivered the babies in Egypt. So they called the organization the same way. What? They're helping people to conceive. People that are barren, whether it's the man, whether it's the woman, they have a, a special clinic over there and they do it according to the law of the Torah. What's permitted, what's not permitted, they know all the rules. It's instructed by big rabbis. Okay. So they help thousands of couples until today to conceive. They couldn't become pregnant. They try all kinds of things. It didn't work for them. So they did it artificially. You know, in a lab. They take the seed from the man. They take the egg from the woman. Sometimes they take an egg from another woman and plant it into his wife. And together, this is how they help a lot of people artificially to have kids. So sometimes couples come to me. Usually it's couples in their 40s, usually. And these couples... They already gave up. They try once, twice. Apparently, from these couples, I found out that it's involved with lots of pain and suffering. Meaning it's not so simple. The woman has to go through pain. This procedure is painful, but most, more than, uh, than physical pain, it's involved with spiritual pain. Meaning the frustration of discovering a month later that it did not work, and you have to start the whole thing again. That's a heartbreaking moment. So how many times you can take it? Once, twice, maybe maximum three times. After three times that a woman in her 40s tried to conceive and she couldn't, she gives up. I, I saw a couple. The husband still want. For him, it's not so painful like her. So he still want. But the wife said, I can't have it anymore. I'm sorry. I went through it once, I went through it twice, whatever, three times. I just cannot do it one more time. And that caused problem. So the same thing here. A person tries to fight his anger or his ego, and he constantly gets angry again and again and again. He's, he's eating his heart. Why did I have to scream like crazy? Why? Why? They go to anger management, to all kinds of things like this. And they look where the salvation is going to come from. The answer is always going to come from Hashem. Zri meim Hashem. Not from the doctors, not from the lawyers, not from the police, not from friends, not from my father-in-law. Zri meim Hashem. It's true that Hashem used messengers. He can find the right messenger to help. But Ezri, the, the help only comes from Hashem. And that's why you need to pray a lot. So the answer to this question is like this. First of all, we have to know we have a rule. Thank God we have this rule. Lo alecha ha-melacha ligmor. You don't have an obligation. It's, it's in Pirkei Avot. You don't have an obligation to finish everything you started. Meaning, if you start to learn the Talmud, thousands of pages in the Talmud. You start to learn, and you see that after a year that you're learning, you only finish one Masechet. You become depressed. Your friends in Yeshiva, this guy finished five Masechetot, this guy finished three, this guy in two, three years already finishing the whole Talmud, genius, super genius, photographic memory, and you, after one year, you finish Masechet Megillah. One of the shortest. You become very depressed. So well, based on this, when I finish the Talmud, I'll be 90. If I ever finish. And when will I start Shulchan Aruch? When will I start Rambam? When will I start all the other things I have to learn? So you, you become very discouraged. This problem, it's the advice of the Satan. The Satan, as you all know, is very smart. 
I can say even a genius. It's an angel, it's not a fool. And it's very, it has a lot of experience. It's very experienced. All these years since Hashem created the world, He knows how to fool people and put a trap in front of them and He always succeeds, almost always. Very, very few people were able to win the war against the Satan. Right? The evil inclination. So one of the ways the Satan breaks a person, he constantly talks to him in his mind. All the thoughts that you have is his words. Listen to you, you loser. Look at yourself. You're pathetic. You learn one year, you finish only one tiny masechet that little children already know better than you. Who are you pretending to be? Whether you're playing that you have Ovadia? What are you thinking? You have Eliashiv? Who are you exactly? All here you learn only one little masechet and you don't even know anything. Forget about it. Torah, it's not for you, you loser. Go back to, do, to be a shushain. Be a, I don't know what, a driver. Forget about it. At least you make money. All you're sitting here in yeshiva in your age. Nothing will come out of you. Anyway, you're never going to be a rabbi. So what's the point? What's the, anyway, what you learn, you forget. All kinds of things like this. This is the way of the Satan to break the spirit of a person. If he does it, and a person broke, it's very difficult later to come back to the learning. Why? Because you need mental power to start from scratch, start from the beginning. It's very difficult. So first of all, you have to know never to be fooled by the Satan. The, in, when you die, in your judgment day, Hashem is not interested in your achievement as far as quantity. He wants quality, meaning effort. You judge mainly 90, 95% of the trial is how much effort you put in your life, in everything you did. How much effort, not how much you succeeded. Thank God we don't judge by success. We don't judge by achievement. We only judge, it's not like in school. In school, everyone looks at your mark. Nobody in school, no one in college, even in yeshivot mainly, nobody cares how much you prepare for the test. Nobody. Nobody writes a comment. This student got 50, but I know he put 50 hours of efforts to prepare for the test. He couldn't do any better. That's it. He did his maximum. It, nobody writes it. 50, and your friend who learned three hours, he got 80. Three hours, 50 hours. You got 50, he got 80. What people care? He is smart and you are stupid. That's it. Nobody cares about the efforts in this world. Nobody pays you based on the efforts. If you're a professional, you came to someone's house to paint, and it took you three times more than the Polish painter from Poland. Three times more. And the job... In the end, they, they, you know, they said to you, listen, we agree the price for the house is $3,000. That's what I'm paying you. I don't care if it took you one week or one year. It's your problem, not mine. He doesn't care that you gave your life into the job and you walk much slower because you didn't want to mess up things. All he cares, we agree, that's the price, finish. But in, by Hashem, it's not like that. Most of the reward comes based on how much you really wanted how much you really cared about, and how much efforts you put into it. A small portion of the reward is based on your achievement. Small, but very small. With or without it, you can make it to a very good place in heaven when you die. But if you don't have the efforts, then you are, your entire life is in a questionable situation. So what's the point? I'm not interested that you're going to finish thousands of pages. No. But when you learn the page, put your heart into it. Learn it real. Learn it serious. No phone, no texting, no cigarettes, coffee, in, out, this. Learn. Try. Break your head. Go home. Repeat. Try again to understand. Show you care. You care? I'm going to reward you fully. You take it easy, like you're reading a little newspaper. That's not what I'm interested in.